number 10, as an entry, we're going to put in three fighters. Kelly Chase, who was a middleweight who fought heavyweights with everything he had to help the team. Cam Jansen, the pride of Eureka, who fought for his team, his town, and his family. There was no way this guy was ever going to back down. No way. Ryan Reeves, he's 6'2", 225 pounds. He could scare you with just a look. The opposition knew there was going to be law and order with Reeves on the ice. Number nine, the greatest show on turf. A different type of intimidation. Mike Martz would tell the team, we are going to lay a half a hundred on them this weekend. A group with four Hall of Famers already and a fifth in Troy Holt who could be on the way. The league had never seen anything like this group before or since. As they say, you can't stop them. You can only hope to contain them, which nobody did. Number eight, Albert Pujols. He had a certain squint at the plate. Not a scowl, but a definite look. And those first 11 years, with all due respect to Stan the Man Musio, were the best in Cardinals history and maybe the best in baseball history. His 445 homers and 455 doubles were the most in the majors. And his staggering 1,037 OPS was second only to Barry Bonds. Albert Pujols intimidated many on the mound. Number seven, Chris Carpenter. He intimidated hitters. He intimidated his own fielders, asked Brendan Ryan. Injuries kept him from Cooperstown, but not from the Cardinals Hall of Fame. The bigger the game, the better he was. His game five in the 2011 NLDS, where he outdueled the late great Roy Halladay, was one of the best games ever pitched by a Cardinal. You just didn't want to have a bat in your hands when this man was on the mound. Number six, Tony Twist. Six foot two and 245 pounds of sheer muscle and a lot of anger when he was protecting a teammate. He's number six on this list, but in my 27 years of covering hockey in his prime, he was the scariest. He had the look, the body, and the passion to hurt people. Tony Twist was a heavyweight champion on skates. Number five, Maurice Lucas. Yes, we can claim him in our town because Maurice Lucas began his career with the Spirits of St. Louis in the ABA. He became an all-star and a world champion with Portland, but he also carries the reputation as the greatest enforcer in the history of the NBA. Ask Artis Gilmore who he decked or the late Daryl Dawkins who he hit. This was a bad man. Nobody ever intimidated Luke. Number four, Conrad Dober. Sports Illustrated labeled him the dirtiest man in football. He was also one of the scariest. The late great Merlin Olsen despised him just like most defensive tackles. He leg whipped and bit his way to three Pro Bowls and was a member of the best offensive line we've ever had in St. Louis. He just looked intimidating. Conrad Dobler was a bad man. Number three, Bob Gassoff. A motorcycle accident took his life far too early at the age of 24, but his impact was made. Just five foot 10 and 190 pounds. He had the wild hair and he threw haymakers like they were going out of style. It's a name, gas off, gas off. When you hear it, you think punishment, pain, and the pride of the blue note. Number two, Sonny Liston. The former heavyweight champion was raised in St. Louis where he said the only thing his old man ever gave him was a beating. Liston returned the favor in the ring. He won 50 of 54 fights, including a staggering 39 knockouts. His childhood also landed him in the Missouri State Pen for five years. But when he got out, people felt Sonny Liston's pain. Number one, Bob Gibson. No real pain was unleashed, but this is the most intimidating athlete to ever play in St. Louis. You won't ever find a photo of Gibson before a game shooting the breeze with the opposition. It doesn't exist. They were the enemy. He would not converse. His catcher, Tim McCarver, was even afraid to go to the mound for a chat. Breathtaking ability and the Gibson glare is the reason number 45 ended up in Cooperstown.